Over the last 10 years, the Department of Radiology at the University of Florida College of Medicine has conducted a simulation-based evaluation of radiology resident competence in critical care imaging. 328 residents interpreted this case of a fishbone lodged in the hypopharynx as one of 65 cases during an 8-hour simulated on-call shift with a median score of 0 out of 10 and an overall average score of 2.43 out of 10. Overall, the average number of points lost out of 10 to observational discipline was 7.45. At the same time, 0.09 points were lost due to interpretive errors on the part of the residents. We defined an effective report to be one which achieves scores between 7 and 10. In terms of letter grades, this would be an A or a B. In this most missed case, 24% of residents produced effective reports. We define a report having a critical error to be one with scores between 0 and 2. In terms of letter grades, this would be an F or a D. In this most missed case, 76% of residents produced reports with critical errors. This patient was a 14-year-old female who presented to the emergency room complaining of a foreign body sensation in her throat. This represents one of the common presentations where we still use lateral soft tissue views of the neck for evaluation. Comes in a couple of varieties. Uh, oftentimes it's an airway evaluation or a screen for possible retropharyngeal abscess. Here we're looking for evidence of foreign body. So whether I'm looking at C-spine fractures or, or uh, this kind of a situation, I always begin by looking at the soft tissues in the neck, and I won't go through that all for cervical spine, but you should be thoroughly familiar with the normal widths of the uh, prevertebral soft tissues uh, down to about the C3-4 level, which varies because of the variation in the pharyngeal anatomy at this level, and then continues to vary because we come into the postcricoid region and then the cervical esophagus. So. It's variable, and, and here it's normal. The other thing in this particular circumstance uh, I would look for is some um, alteration in the fat stripe. It's not all that reliable on plain films, very reliable on CTs, but that's not what we're talking about here. The other thing in a foreign body situation is to look for gas in the soft tissues, which would be an indication of a false passage. And then you can begin with an evaluation of the airway itself and the mucosal surfaces. So the airway anatomy is pretty straightforward here. This is the oropharynx, the vollecula, and the epiglottis, and the hypopharynx, laryngeal ventricle. You can see the true cords here. So the dilemma here is always with foreign bodies. Is it, pot, is it uh, part of the natural calcifications that occur in the laryngeal skeleton, or is it a foreign body? So you look around for something that doesn't look like it's part of the laryngeal uh, skeletal calcifications. So down here we see uh, fairly symmetric calcific structures that that are um, pretty obviously anatomic in location, a partial calcification laryngeal skeleton. However, there is a curvilinear density here that doesn't fit, right? This is the aryepiglottic fold bulge back here, but that's not a soft tissue bulge. You can see that as, as a potential foreign body. Then out here, you could attribute this to the top of the uh, thyroid lamina, which is probably shaped about like that here. But I don't, I don't think it would be useful to attribute um, that linear calcification definitively to laryngeal skeleton. Uh, and the last thing you can do in assessing the airway is look for some element of airway obstruction, which is sometimes manifest as a, a distension of the oropharynx and maybe even the upper hypopharynx, and we don't have that here, but there's no real airway abnormality. So in this case, this study should be read out as suspicious, not definitive, but suspicious for that representing a foreign body and that linear calcification or density representing a foreign body that might be something akin to a fish bone or fragments of a chicken bone or something like that. It's usually most prudent when you have this kind of suspicion on this to carry on with a non-contrast CT. With regard to the uh, action to be taken on this, um, you should call the ER, warn them about this, and suggest uh, a, uh, a CT if the patient's uh, symptomatic. And I think this requires uh, um, 
a phone call, so-called uh, so-called um, not routine communication to the uh, treating docs.